Hello everyone. It's great to be with you today and I'm joined by Dr. Catherine Casey, an integrative medical doctor. Hi Catherine. Hi Sandra. We thought we'd talk about thyroid problems because they're so incredibly common. Indeed, uh, autoimmune thyroid disease is the most common of all the autoimmune diseases and yet often people struggle to get a holistic solution to their problem. And we're very interested in integrative medicine that gives a holistic treatment. So I thought we'd start with the most problematic of all autoimmune thyroid diseases, and that's Graves' disease, which is a bit of an unfortunate name, really, because it doesn't have to be that grave, <laughs> does it? Um, Definitely not. But it can be quite dramatic, you know, when yeah. it first comes on, because, you know, your thyroid gland is very overactive, and everything speeds up, so you could have a racing heart, you could have a fever, rapid weight loss, diarrhea, insomnia, you know, everything's too fast and uh, the patient really doesn't feel very well and uh, it can be, you know, difficult to cope with those symptoms and the standard treatment is, um, you know, giving you drugs that block the production of thyroid hormone, such as carbimazole, and it works very well, but it's still only treating the symptoms, isn't it? That's right, yeah. Yeah. So, if you're only treating the symptoms, what's going to happen when you stop the drug is the cause is still there and the symptoms may likely recur. And then what happens is you may be advised to have your thyroid gland removed surgically, completely, or irradiated with radioactive iodine so that it's totally destroyed. So it's a big decision for people to make and they often think, well, what else can I do before I make that decision? Because it's very final. Um, is there anything else I can do to calm the thyroid down? And yes, there is a lot, isn't it? Absolutely. Um, and I think that the other um, issue is that once you've got that thyroid gone, you're on thyroid medication. Um, which doesn't work that well for everybody. Some people have a lot of issues with the most typical, um, you know, yes. thyroxine and oroxine. Yes. Um, some people don't actually do that well on those medications, which are replacing the thyroid hormone that your gland, you know, can no longer produce. Um, but uh, it sort of requires, you know, routine blood testing a couple times a year, prescriptions, yes. and you're, you're on a medication for life, basically, once you lose your gland. And sometimes that is, is a really tricky path to go down. So I've got a few patients who really do regret having um, removed their thyroid glands rather than considering alternative options. And I actually think of autoimmune disease as an opportunity. So if you have um, the right access, you know, the right resources, the right information, um, autoimmune disease can be a wake up call. So if you've got autoantibodies against your thyroid gland, that's sort of uh, an insight into the fact that your body's not functioning uh, as it should and there's usually gut issues underlying you know leaky gut or um, overgrowth of bacteria in the small intestine and if those issues aren't addressed then there's the potential for other types of autoimmune diseases to develop as well as you know aging and degeneration and chronic inflammation and aches and pains and fatigue and memory fog so it's sort of an opportunity to get everything back under control and you yes. know get a diet or get an eating plan um, that's in alignment with what your body requires Yes. So yes. you see yeah. it as an opportunity. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Now that's a very positive way to look at it. Um, it's your immune system, really. It's not your thyroid gland that's the problem. That's right. I mean, sometimes people who have a very overactive thyroid gland do actually have a problem with their thyroid, where they have nodules, you know, little lumps in the thyroid, which are overproducing thyroid hormone, and that's more difficult to control. Sometimes you have to have half your thyroid removed. Um, and that's where the thyroid tissue is unhealthy. But with Graves' disease, it's not your thyroid gland that's the problem, it's the antibodies that your immune system is producing that are attacking your gland and making your gland inflamed and causing it to overproduce the hormone. So if we can treat the gut and therefore the immune system and improve the liver, well, then we may be able to reduce those autoantibodies. Yeah, I've seen that in, in quite a few patients. Me too. Yeah, mm. definitely. It's definitely possible to get rid of autoantibodies, which is just amazing. You can potentially, if caught early, you can turn that entire disease around yes. without having to have medication for the rest of your life and you know, surgery or some kind of ablation. That's right. I remember once the, the worst case of 
overactive thyroid due to Graves' disease that I'd ever seen was this lady that was so acute onset and her thyroid was swollen but she didn't have any hot nodules, it was just Graves' disease and her autoantibodies were through the roof. She had so much inflammation in the gland, I had to give her a low dose steroid. It worked very well to mm. reduce inflammation. Then progesterone, which is a female hormone that can help inflammation of autoimmune origin and some selenium, magnesium, those minerals are very important for the thyroid gland. And um, I did a urine test to check her iodine and she was actually iodine deficient. Um, because some people think that overactive thyroid is always caused by too much iodine. It's not a common cause of overactive mm. thyroid. So, you know, it's always important in anyone with thyroid problem to check the level of iodine in their body. We do that with a urine test. But yeah, she did respond, but it actually took some steroids in the beginning um, and she was able to save her gland. So, you know, even extreme cases can respond to holistic medicine. Of course, you can't guarantee it, you know, it, that's why you need to work with a doctor and severe Graves' disease also see an endocrinologist. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and sometimes the drugs are needed to block the overproduction of thyroid hormone, but hopefully just temporarily. Yeah, the body's, yeah. the body's capacity for regeneration is actually remarkable. So once you get rid of the things that are causing the issues, the underlying you know, autoimmune triggers, the gut dysfunction, environmental triggers, um, deficiencies, once you target those um, you know, variables and get everything optimised, the body's capacity for recovery is amazing. Amazing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you can repair a lot of cell damage and get cell renewal. Um, it just takes a little time. Um, but what often happens is people panic and they think, oh, you know, I've got to do something straight away. I've got to have my thyroid gland out. People do panic um, because they don't really have much experience with yeah. nutritional medicine. And some doctors don't have any experience with that, so they don't have the confidence. A lot yeah. of doctors are not aware of the options for treating autoimmune disease with dietary modification, unfortunately. I had a patient earlier today who basically... Um, was a little bit frantic because her endocrinologist gave her an ultimatum. Um, she has low-level Graves' disease, which is, in my opinion, probably reversible. If she takes some, you know, my advice, then, yeah, definitely reversible. Um, but, yeah, her um, endocrinologist was quite keen to move forwards to either surgery or, yeah, radioactive iodine ablation. Um, and the patient wasn't keen, so we just came up with a plan for what she could do. Good. Um, and I'm really excited to see how that goes, because you can really yeah. get amazing results. Yeah, I'm, I'm conservative, you know, I, and I don't panic. I, I think, take your time. Stress can have a lot to do with Graves' disease too, you know. Absolutely. Women who are perfectionists and they've got children and a job and they drive themselves. And sometimes it's a rain check on, well, what's really important in my life that you know, I really need to get enough sleep, do some exercise, really maybe learn to meditate or do yoga or something to really get the whole balance back mm -hmm. in your body. Yeah. It's very important. And and the other interesting issue, I think, Catherine, with the thyroid disease is the autoantibodies. You know, a lot of patients will say to me, oh, the doctor said, well, it's normal to have those autoantibodies when you've got thyroid disease and don't worry about them. There's nothing you can do. But that's the cause of the disease. So, well, let's try and get them down. Yeah, absolutely. And they will come down. Very doable. Yeah, if yeah. you're willing to change your diet, and <laughs> not everyone is, but it's not that hard, really, is it? It's, a, it's, it's an option. changing habits. I would, yeah. I would prefer being, as, you know, as a patient or even as a doctor, you know, being given the information and having the opportunity to choose what is going to work for me. So modifying my diet is something that was very easy for me to accept and was something that I was very happy to try and some people just will not give up wheat. I have, <laughs> yeah, I have a friend with Hashimoto's which is an issue, an issue that I've had a problem with and there's no way she's going to get rid of wheat. So we're just, we're just going to see how that one goes and that's fine. I mean, I explain, you know, what I know and people make a choice about what their priorities are. Yes, that's right. And it takes time to change your habits and, you know, you can say to somebody, well, let's give it a go for six months and see the difference. If it doesn't make any difference, well, then it's probably not worth it. But 
You've got to try things. Yeah, yeah. it usually makes a difference. Yeah, a it bit, does. A big difference. And then people feel better and they lose weight and everything starts improving. So once you sort of get a taste of what it's like to be healthy, especially if, you're, um, if your health has been deteriorating for a while, having that sort of period of actual, you know, remission is, you, you feel really good and it gives you a little bit of motivation to keep it up. Yes. That's yeah. true. And, yeah. and you can see the antibodies coming down on the blood test. Yeah, definitely. That gives you motivation when yeah. you see them gradually coming down. And, you know, also balancing the thyroid hormones. So for people with an underactive thyroid, we call that Hashimoto's thyroiditis, named after Dr. Hashimoto, um, we can get the antibodies down and we can balance the thyroid hormones because, as you were saying before, some people who are taking the synthetic thyroid hormone the roxin don't feel well other people do and this is the interesting thing we're all individuals some people take a roxin and it works fantastic mm -hmm. other people take it and they think well I still feel the same as before when my gland was underactive and that can be due to gut problems deficiency of selenium deficiencies of iodine and just um, dysfunctional liver that's not converting the thyroxine into the active form. So the the wonderful thing about integrated medicine is you can fine tune people, like an engine, you know, you can fine tune it. So yeah. it's 100% efficient. That's right. Mm. That's what we do, eh? It's very cool. <laughs> very cool, I like <laughs> it's that. It's very cool. <laughs> okay, so thanks for listening and um, we hope you have learned something interesting and worthwhile. We'll be back. Thank you. <laughs>